Victor's so Victor older. promised to train Yuri. Yuri yeah. woke up, hung over, remembered none of it, and left. Yeah, Yuri basically begged him, had a had a had a dance battle with him, grinded on him a bit, drunk, and and Victor took that as the the boy likes me. Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go over, fulfill his wildest dreams, and mate, he can't remember any of it. <laughs> So Yuri was a skater boy, and he said, "See you later, boy." Oh come on! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I'll have you know that if this anime was set earlier, I would agree with you. But this is Yolo territory. In fact, the ending of the show ends with a song called "You Only Live oh, Once." Oh wait! Just, just fucking mute me. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can top that joke. I'm done now. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> about barbie yeah i haven't seen it yet oh go see it yeah uh, yeah sophie wants to go see it i just haven't had chance yet worth doing hmm. it does look... let's not talk let's not talk barbie then i don't want to spoil anything for nick <laughs> okay fair enough it, it does look um it does look like my kind of odd it is yeah there are several references to 2001 a space odyssey yeah, well yeah i saw the trailer there's there's more than just the trailer oh <laughs> Excellent. Um, I mean, Wait. we could talk about two thousand one: A Space Odyssey if you want. Uh, no. I, I th- no, we're talking. We're talking Yuri on Ice, Nick. Yeah, I know, but like, um, I have a problem with two thousand and one. He's absolutely oh, brilliant. I love it. <laughs> up, no, up until he goes. Cool. So I've muted Nick, so he can <laughs> have, carry that on his own. Grace, how are you doing? Yeah, all right. They get the carbon Perfect. curse has struck again at work. Carbon cast. Yeah. We can carry this on until Nick figures out how to unmute himself. Okay. So. I mean, I'll, yeah, tell me about I'll the carbon just, cast. No, he's back. <laughs> he's not on my end. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it just mutes him for me. That's interesting. Grace, you, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna have to tell him. I'll, I'll I'll just log off and like go to bed. I don't mind. I've he unmuted says he'll Nick. Log off and go to bed. He I heard mind. I heard go to bed. <laughs> that's a shame. I thought I could hang. Can I? I'm just gonna t- look at my options here. He's drunk with power. This one, isn't yeah, he? This he doesn't is, understand this is it. his nickname. Yeah. I could just, I could just block you. That's useful. <laughs> oh, hang on, Nick. Let's just test. Pol- I just want to test this, Nick. Keep talking. Okay, I'm going to keep talking about nothing. Im- ah, Grace, did that mute him? Yeah, he's gone. Okay. Bring him back. Yeah. There we go. That brought up like a, a little microphone with a cross through it on my end. So yeah. You can- so that that mutes for everyone. Yeah, you can mute me for everyone. Fantastic. <laughs> What an arsehole. Hi everyone, welcome to the shipping forecast. All right, fucking I'm sim- drunk on power. Yeah, fucking simmer down, Napoleon. I have. <laughs> Joining me uh, is the Chaos Gremlin herself, Grace. Oh, um, thank you. And Nick. Uh, I don't have a nickname for you. Do I have a title? Nick. No, not yet. <laughs> you know. Do I give him a title? Uh, Nick, destroyer of train of thoughts. Uh consistent rambler about vehicle trivia. <laughs> derailer of podcasts. Derailer yeah. of podcasts. Yes. The derailer. All mm-hmm. fear the derailer. Yeah. Exactly. We're back to our normal schedule. Hello, everyone. We won't go into it too much, but it's Grace's fault that we all went off well, for a bit and had a chaos episode. I mean, to be fair, it was kind of my work's fault because I had training at a similar ti- uh, similar kind of time. So you did, but you were also in the neighbourhood during that time, so we could have recorded in person. Yeah, this is this is true. This is true. Like we did for the chaos episode. Yeah, yeah, I, I did have the foresight of like coming down the day before. Exactly. Um, to be fair, it was to visit an air museum, but I managed to work in a visit to to you as well. So, exactly. Yeah. Which you all heard last episode. As we got drunk and read through Quora answers. Yeah, and drank some Prime. And drank. Oh God, I forgot about the Prime. <laughs> I've I've not watched this episode. <laughs> so I or think the core thing it. was rewriting the love languages. Yeah, we Because WikiHow, WikiHow had new love languages, and we were like, we can do better than that. Oh. And I think we did. Uh, yeah, I think I, we did. I'm probably gonna watch it and be like, no. Hang on, <laughs> I, I can, I'll find you because I wrote them down. Let me find. I'll find Grace the love languages. <laughs> And are we doing I'll a, see. We are doing a last time on the shipping forecast, aren't we? So, seven love languages. One, living in mutual filth. Yep. Uh. Two, 
Mutual bickering. Yep. Telepathy. It's only fun if you both decide to bicker at the same time. Yeah, you've got to unify and bicker about the same things. Yeah. You've got to sync up your bickering. Telepathy. Yep. Impossible. No, yeah. No, I think the, I think the, the good couples have telepathy down. Oh, like the psychic community can have it. Yeah. So when I get my phone out and start grinning at it and, like, scrolling... Sophie basically says, stop looking at cars on Facebook Marketplace. That kind of telepathy. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, That's okay. telepathy, yeah. Yeah, she knows exactly what like, I'm doing. I thought it was like someone at work just like messaging the missus via the mind, like, the cat is out Put of the cat Put the kettle food. on, <laughs> I'm coming home. That one, no. Stuck in traffic 20 minutes late. Pranks. <laughs> Pranks. Yep. Pranks. Sending memes. Yep, sending memes is one. Destroying their toilet. <laughs> no. Or feeling inco- and... feeling comfortable enough to destroy their toilet. Yes. And finally, no! se- finally, sense of guilt for watching TV without them. Yeah. I I don't feel that. No. <laughs> Those are the seven love languages. No. <laughs> okay, love Grace. In that case, what are your seven love languages? Love no one, hate everyone, trust nothing. Those are not love languages. <laughs> it is. It's fuck off, I don't like you, go away. Oh, that, that is. That is. Those are the decided. key phrases. <laughs> I. Grace if is a Sunday, got it. If, if they stay, get a warrant. Grace is either. Grace, Grace's love language is going bright red and going, backer, I don't want to spend time with you. When she and then no, running it's... away. Yeah. It's the hair on my head standing up like a cat's tail and me hissing. So Yeah, no, I, I believe that. Grace is either a Sundere or a character in a Tom Clancy novel or video game or film or whatever he's famous for. Could have just said a cat. <laughs> Are you thinking of like the Metal Gear Solid exclamation mark above the head? N- Nick? No, I'm think I'm thinking like the the trust nothing, suspect nobody, love oh, no okay. one. I'm married to my job, and I'm a maverick spy who doesn't play by the rules and gets the job done. How could you okay. possibly love somebody like me? Well, I'm, I've changed I'm my mind. I'm not nearly as stoic. <laughs> no, Grace's love language is the Metal Gear Solid exclamation mark that appears when you've been spotted. <laughs> with the doot <laughs> noise. You all know the one. No, I don't, because I've never played it. Oh, it's a meme, though. I've not seen the meme. I'm too young for this. <laughs> no, you're not. The Metal Gear Solid games are all... Oh, wait, younger. Yeah, I guess. The fifth one came out a couple of years ago. Well, I've, I've never played Metal Gear Solid, and I know what you're on about. I, I move in a different circle. Mm. Well, Small, angry ones. Fine. Yes, I pace. <laughs> and I plot. <laughs> <laughs> that one? No. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. I guess Grace has less time to waste on the internet than, than us. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just computers explode when she touches them, so mm. she's not had a chance to see memes like that. Yeah. I, I can project them in my crystal ball. Oh, yeah. Which I forgot, is how I'm talking to you now. I forgot Grace is a bog witch. <laughs> but what's great about it is that, unlike a lot of uh, modern phones, is that... You can plug an audio jack into this crystal ball. <laughs> to be fair, I buy my phones based on can I buy can I plug an audio jack into it? Yeah, it's sad that I don't that we don't want to move on. <laughs> no, it, it isn't. But also, it's good because they don't run out of power by yeah. themselves. Yeah. What? Okay, we don't like to take many stance any political stances on this podcast. We like to remain neutral on some issues. Fuck wireless headphones. We can't be bothered to charge another device. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We've only got so many sockets in Little the Little earbuds, house. you're just going to lose them. The only way I could live with wireless earbuds is if I tied... You know, do you remember when you were little and your mum would sew your gloves with some elastic into your oh, coat pockets? Your yeah. yeah. I would do yeah. that with my ear f- with my headphones if I had wireless ones. Yeah, it's, so there's no point. This is the thing. We we must have reached the zenith of mobile phone technology now. They are too fucking complicated. Calm the fuck down. They do not need better or just, features. Or, or just give me an, a jack. An audio jack. Give us a headphone jack. Ooh, ooh. I, I saw some good, good news, both. actually. It is good to have both, because when you're in the gym, or like you don't want to be fucking about with a bit of wire attached to something, it's great. I've never no. felt that but, that bit of wire is an, in, is an inconvenience. No. 
I have when I've strangled myself on it. Only you would do s- that. No, I've seen other people. I've had it catch it. on door handles before. Ugh. So there is that downside. However, I think it's worth it. Yeah, I think Because I'd lose them otherwise. But some good phone news. The European Union. Okay. They've said phones have to have removable batteries again. Oh, Yay. yes. Like, by, you won't be able to sell new phones in Europe in a couple of years unless you can take the battery out yourself. That makes me really, really happy. Because it just I makes know, it right? so cheap to replace now. I love the European Union so much. Yeah, you just buy a battery and just... Whoop, God, I miss them. <laughs> and it goes. Well, yeah. <laughs> of course, there's no um, uh, there's no desire that Brexit will follow suit. And if... Uh uh-huh, but... So, Nick, here's where the beautiful part comes in. Hmm. It's more expensive to make two models of phone, one with a detachable battery and one without. Yeah, so yeah. if Europe... If the EU does it... No, we've seen this happen in America, because hmm. there's no point manufacturing two versions... So, if it happens in Europe, it'll happen for the rest of the world. Fingers crossed. Yes. Yeah, like, fingers crossed. Because, to be fair, I suppose what they could do is just build a removable battery phone, but, like, sick of flex the back shut for the UK market. Well, you just tape it off, then. Yeah, in which case, you'd probably have to, like, I don't know, heat it or break the back off and buy a new back once yeah. you've cleaned out all the adhesive. Yeah. I, I can't see him doing that, though. You'll need to take it to a specialist who'll remove it for you and put it back together. I can't see that happening, though. At least I hope not. Yeah. Uh, Mine is old enough that you can remove the battery. Mm. But yes, thank you, European Union. Yeah, that's fantastic. I said we wouldn't get political. Here I am, like, (laughs) yes, Europe. (laughs) It would be fantastic, though, because then you don't have to dick about with power banks. You just charge your phone, Mm. replace the battery, charge your phone again, and then you've got a fully charged battery. Yeah. That you can just like swap in. Like a drill. In. Yeah. Like a That's Makita what I used to drill. Do. Yeah. Or DeWalt, or any other good brand. Other oh, brands are available. Da, 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 <laughs> da, so, da, da, talking da, of wonderful da. things that have come out of Europe, uh, we're talking about Yuri on Ice today. Okay. Which didn't come out of Europe. Nice segue, James. Well, yeah, we also shouldn't have come out of Europe. That's another. <laughs> That's not where I was going with it, but yes. I said. Yuri on Ice didn't come out of Europe. Ah, but the main character, Yuri Gagarin, is from Russia, which is continental Europe. He's not the main character. He's, he's in the title. I always knew you would have an unfair advantage making this joke because you're the <laughs> fucking host. I mean, this is Grace's episode. Right. She could have taken over Right, any we time. are rewriting that entire thing. No, nope. that was a train wreck. I'm, I'm editing. It wasn't... It, not only was it not funny, it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. It's just that I wanted to get there first. <laughs> so for listeners at home, when Grace suggested we do Yuri on Ice, one of the first things I said was, it's going to be a race between me and Nick to make a joke about Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. Yeah. And I won. You did. Well done. So I want to point out something. We, although we have not done Yuri on Ice before on this episode, according to you, mm-hmm. Yuri on Ice has actually come up before. Okay. Uh, and you made that joke last time. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but I think Nick had it last time. Ah, well, there you go. Well, we, cov- we cover a lot of Yuri on this show. It's only fair that we, uh, we get this one in, too. I think you, know, you guys know what's coming next now. Uh, no. Here on the shipping forecast, we like to do our bit to save the planet. Even our jokes are Oh, recycled. fuck off. Yeah. Because the key to comedy... So, Grace, Nick, I will mute you. No. Grace, <laughs> tell us about Yuri on Ice. Yes, please, Grace, tell us. What can I tell you about Yuri on Ice? Well, Yuri on Ice is about uh, a man called Yuri from Japan, and he becomes a professional uh-huh. ice skater. I always thought he was Russian. Listen to me. No, I'm not even making the joke. Like, <laughs> apologies. So, Yuri Katsuki, mm-hmm. spelt differently to... Gagarin. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> uh, there's two U's in this, Yuri. Oh, okay. So, uh, I think oh, yeah, so well, it is. It's it's spelt differently, dependent way. you the, But the title... Sorry, the title has it with one U, so I thought it was... Yeah. Cool. In the Romanji, it's got dots above the U. Uh-huh. If that, oh no, a line above the U. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically, what he does is he grows up, becomes a pro uh, ice skater, performance ice skater. Okay. 
he doesn't do as well as he wanted and he starts to lose love for ice skating and he loses confidence and you know he, he decides to take he puts his career on hold for a little bit and you know he gets quite I don't know he gains a bit of weight and he sort of lacks confidence and I think he's got a bit of anxiety bless him um one day he's just hang on don't tell me he's called out of retirement for one last competition <laughs> You know what, Nick? <laughs> He's not retired, but you've almost fucking got it. Uh, um, a mate of his uh, films him doing one of uh, one of his idol's uh, famous sets, like choreography sets. Okay. And films it, and it goes viral. Said idol, Victor, sees it. And goes, fuck it, I'm going to bounce over to Japan. This cute lad is going to have my help becoming, like, number one skater. Because he, Victor's been, like, the top skater for years. And he really likes you. Okay. So he goes over and, <laughs> and tries to get him back into skating and says, you know, I will... Do your chor- I will plan your choreography for you to use in your skating uh, should you enter. And Yuri says, yeah, great. Yeah, I'll do it. It sounds really um, fluffy so far. Yeah, it is. Uh, and then the antagonist comes in. <laughs> Hang on, there's a villain Yuri. in figure skating. He's, he's not really a villain. He's, he's more of an emo kid. <laughs> okay. Do you have pictures, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, it, it has somehow, somewhat become tradition to play Smash or Pass as we introduce the characters. I, so. I can't put Smash and Pass... Uh, Why not? ...for everyone, because some are under... Oh, well, that, so. that's fine. So he's, we, we, we skipped uh, the kids in Spy Family for exactly that reason. So his, yeah. uh, his rival, is it like... Are they a bit like the German bobsled team in Cool Runnings? <laughs> or, or I have bobsled. no idea what that means. No, <laughs> no he's... <laughs> He's an angry little teenager who's just like Victor said, here, do my choreography and he's just fucked off to Japan and like, he's also on the Russian oh. team as well as Victor. Okay, so he's got beef because yeah. so like, Victor's just like dropped him for this other guy. Imagine Cool yeah. Runnings if everyone was a twink. <laughs> oh, <for fuck's> sake. <laughs> well, including John Candy. Yes. <laughs> I've never seen Cool Runnings. I don't know. Oh, I'm looking at the cover film. art and everyone's a twink. It's, so it's such that... a good film, but yeah. Actually, if that, if the one I'm thinking of is the coach, not everyone is a twink. Uh, John Candy is the, the big fat bloke. The Yuri on Ice, not Cool Runnings. Oh, I see. <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> right. This is our boy Yuri. Okay, let's have a look. He is 23. He is our main character. So it hasn't appeared just any, just yet. Fucking... Who have you sent it there to? We go. Ah, there we. Yes, I was wondering if it was him. I'm assuming, and forgive me if I've got the plot wrong. I'm guessing he's just a bland, unattractive man, and then he's going to take his glasses off, and suddenly everyone's going to notice he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> There's going to be lots of oh, I'm so ugly, I mean, and I've put on no, weights. No, no, and no, then... no, 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 no. All right, all right. So he he has gained a bit of weight since doing the stuff and in his training he does have to lose a bit of weight to get into peak skating performance but ultimately no not really that's a shame i love that trope it's so stupid (laughs) although he's not going to be wearing his glasses for the skating because they're gonna fucking come off makes sense so he ends up looking like this squinting at the scoreboard (laughs) oh i mean jim you're kind of right (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he takes the glasses off and everyone's like, oh, oh, he's handsome all along. <laughs> he's always been handsome, our boy. He's, he's, he's a lovely lad. Actually, yeah, this is this is less uh, girly rom-com, taking off glasses suddenly is hot. That's a Clark Kent versus Superman transition. It is, yeah. Yeah, it is. And, like, like, the moment he's finished his set, he'll sit down and he'll go back to, like, I, I can't see without my glasses. Oh, he's vulgar <laughs> too. This- He's lovely. He he's squinting at the scoreboard. He's like, "Did I win?" You know. <laughs> this is the equivalent of me losing my glasses and turning into Vin Diesel. <laughs> sure. <laughs> he is our precious little pork okay. cutlet bowl. Why pork right. cutlet bowl? Okay, let's because it's a thing in okay, the show. Okay. This this is our 
multiple skating champion, Victor. All ah. oh, right, yeah. He, he's who, got bad boy vibes. A, he's he's not he's not a bad boy, not really. It may he's, just be the haircut. He's more of like over enthusiastic, but it's because he looks like Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> he does look he like Mads. I knew I was getting villain vibes from him. I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> you can't help that he's blonde. That's anime <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen. Uh. <laughs> Hang on, let me just check. So, I... <laughs> so anime Mad Mi- Mad Mickelson, who just has a love of ice skating and thinks it's a great shame that this great skater is not doing it anymore. I'm guessing. So Mad Mickelson <laughs> has been married since the year 2000. Okay. Is his okay. wife very faithful? They got two kids. And it's like, I wonder what she thinks about every handsome anime character slash every show Mad Mickelson is in. Just him being heavily sexualized. <laughs> Specifically by gay men. <laughs> she probably loves it. Oh yeah, she, I'm sure she thinks it's hilarious. He's he's pushing 60, by the way. Looking good. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's looking good for a 60-year-old man. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Sorry, tangent over. Yeah. <laughs> You're all just going, oh, I wonder how his wife feels. Oh, God, he's looking he good. He is looking good for his Yeah, like, guys. <laughs> into gilf territory. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> oh, good. Back to the Gadilf, show. <laughs> to be fair. Gadilf, yeah, but you know. Because you've, you've oh. got to distinguish between Gadilf and Gamilf. Or, the, you know, grandparent I'd like to fuck. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Somebody else's grandparent, Right, so obviously. what's... No, Grace, do you, hell, know, do you see now how it feels? <laughs> Heard these cats. It's, it's funny. The it's shoe funny. is on another foot. <laughs> All right, so I'll tell you something funny about the, I don't know, like anyone who's probably listening to this has probably seen it, but if you haven't, like just mute me for a bit. <laughs> but basically, spoilers is uh, what we're trying to say. Spoilers for yeah, Yuri. Yeah, exactly. minor minor spoilers. So basically, Yuri has no fucking idea why Victor is has come out of nowhere and is like essentially trying to coach him, like trying to convince him okay. to coach him. Okay. And and is like heavily flirting with him and stuff. Like he even like starts doing this in the hot spring in the back of his house. Of course, there's like, a hot spring uh-huh. episode. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sort of like runs away, and Victor's all upset. It's like, why is it? Why doesn't he like me anymore? You know. And it turns out ages ago, they they had met at like uh, a skating thing. Okay. And um, there was like an after party, and. Yuri gets trashed, and he just he just says, "Oh, I love you, Victor. Will, will you coach me and all that shit?" <laughs> and and Victor remembers this and goes, "Yeah, fuck it. I'll take him up on it. I'll coach him." Yuri wakes up hungover, remembers nothing. <laughs> so first of all, I'm shocked these these children are old enough to drink because that Yuri boy looks underage. He does. Apart from when he takes his glasses off, it ages him up. No, he's. Mm-hmm. He just looks at... He's just fluffy. He's he's 23. So Victor's a so lot So Victor older. promised to train Yuri. Yuri yeah. woke up, hung over, remembered none of it, and left. Yeah, Yuri basically begged him, had a had a, had a a dance battle with him, grinded on him a bit, drunk, and and Victor took that as, the, the boy likes me. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm gonna go over, fulfill his wildest dreams, and matey can't remember any of it. <laughs> so Yuri was a skater boy, and he said, "See you later, boy." Oh come on! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I'll have you know that if this anime was set earlier, I would agree with you. But this is Yolo territory. In fact, the ending of the show ends with a song called "You Only Live oh, Once." Oh wait! <laughs> just, just fucking mute me. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can top that joke. I'm done now. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> so, Sorry, Grace. Carry on. Let's see. Who else? Who else? There's the other there? Yuri. Yuri too. There is the other Yuri. Okay. This is going to get confusing. Right. I'm not going to put him in the Smasher Pass because he is not old enough. Oh, what? I'm guessing he's named after Yuri One. Oh God. I'll put him parent- in. The- did Victor Victor have kids and name him after Yuri? (laughs) So Victor has a son that he named because... No, he doesn't. He named after this one handsome twink he met at a bar once. (laughs) No. (laughs) Alright, so this is He looks older than first Yuri. Yuri. I think that might just be the anger in his eyes. 
in the picture you've picked. He is a very angry young man. I think he's like 15. Okay. You know, he he was he's a protege, right? He is very bloody talented. He is like top of his class, prote- protege mm. sort of level. He's he's like he can he's got the flexibility of like a ballerina and for a bloke that's really impressive mm-hmm. in like figure skating. He can he can bend, right? He's got a massive fan base who all call him like Kitty Yuri and stuff. Like I can't remember the actual fucking name, but they he's called like the the Ice Tiger of Russia wow. or something. He is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's a, he's very short tempered, very sort of driven to be the best and come first. I'm ass- yeah. He he has to have a dance battle with other Yuri for Victor to coach one of them, and Victor decides to coach uh, Japanese Yuri, Yuri Katsuki. I think this is why I thought Yuri was Russian, because I did some very cursory Wikipedia looking in, and I saw there was a Russian Yuri. So I suspect this is where I'm getting this from. I see. He is 15 in the anime and 16 in the OVA. I wonder Ah. why they aged him up. Hmm. As time has passed. Oh, oh, that might be okay. I thought it was going to be like a aha legal, but no. Thank Christ for that. <laughs> time has passed. It's not to do with anything seedy. Well, all right. I think I think this fella is going to come up as well. And this is our man from Kazakhstan. Our man from right? Kazakhstan. Yeah, he. I believe he's old enough. I haven't quite he looks checked his age, to be honest. I'm pretty sure. Sh- I'm going to level with you. They all look at him, in my opinion. I would not have guessed Yuri, Russian Yuri, otherwise. So he is a DJ as well. Uh, he is like the stoic, shy sort of, sort of fella who doesn't really say anything, becomes friends with Russian Yuri. Uh, and I think you'll see him shipped with him quite a lot because they seem to be the only two people who end up being like actual close friends with each other by the end of the show. Oh. Now he is he did used to train with Russian Yuri, but he was so bad at the ballet stuff he ended up leaving and decided I'm gonna he was gonna work on really difficult techniques to get through the thing. So everyone's like, Holy fuck, look at him go. He can he can just he's got like power he's quite stout, he's got power behind like jumping and shit. His technique is like mwah, like you know. And that's how he it's what he relies upon going okay. forward in the show. Because, because obviously, I just want to back no, remind no. everyone: this is about well, figure skating. This is the, a the lore anime. is clear. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I like that it falls into the <laughs> other sport forget. anime tropes of him just going off and doing training montages all this time. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> uh, what I find, what I actually like about you and Ice is that even though ev- like you got loads of characters from different nationalities, they don't fall into the really basic cheesy stereotypes. They're their own characters, and they just sort of. You know, they're individuals, which a lot of a lot of anime mm-hmm. and a lot of shows in general just don't do. And I'm, yeah, you know, it's nice. It's nice to see. No, I agree with right. that. Right, who else do I think we're gonna see? Right, yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we are one hundred percent gonna see this prat, and he is called JJ. JJ. Oh, he looks oh. like a prat. JJ style. He looks like a a different member of a JJ bloodline, if you know what I mean. I, I know what Good. you mean, but he is he is Canadian, oh. <laughs> and because I'm so used to him being called JJ, I forget his actual oh. name. So let me just uh, okay, Jean Jack. Okay. Leroy. Jack <laughs> yeah. He's, Leroy. Oh, he's, yeah. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> John Jacks Leroy. <laughs> Hang his... on, Grace. So I've got the wiki open. He's got two nicknames. Uh, one is JJ, and the other is Shithead. Nice! <laughs> yep, because he is confident to the point of arrogance. He's, to quote a film we saw recently, he's got the Kennedy. I see. He's got Kennedy. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He, he, lo- sure he looks like he has Kennedy, right. to be fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he. He is probably he, he does very well in everything, but not even he could, like he's so confident and he does everything really well. And then like, I think near the end, pressure finally gets to him, <laughs> and he does shit. <laughs> so his parents are um, 
are oh fuck, I don't know what his parents are. His parents are His parents he comes from a family of Olympic ice skaters. Okay. Uh so like he's he's got that heritage behind him and that makes him confident and that gives him that boost and he's got it's like he's had a lot of training and he's been very good at it from a young age and he's quite a good com uh rival. Okay. In the show. So yeah, you might see him appear in fan fiction as just like this just this idiot that comes from so I'm, somewhere. So I'm guessing that he's going to be the one person who doesn't get a redemption arc. I, I mean, no one really needs to be redeemed of anything. Like, it's it's a competition, but it's not like people are backstabbing each other and shit. It's just friendly yeah, sportsmanship. Like, this is really, it's really not that dark. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> That's surprising, because normally with sports anime, I, I expect it to get sort of tied to, like, the underworld and, like... Yeah, it seems weird. It's not yeah, I, I, I was thinking about the golf lesbians there, but there's there's other anime too, like Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, like the classic sports anime. This... <laughs> it is no <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh follows the plot of a sports anime. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was just gonna say this one seems like um, by anime standards anyway, it seems really grounded. Yeah, it is. It, oh, yeah, a lot of like ice skaters have watched it and yeah, gone, yeah, it's, it's, love it's it. just about <laughs> a, a dude who was good at ice skating, who's now less good at ice skating, and who's been so you're able saying to get better at ice skating again. So this is to figure skating what Yakuza is to the Yakuza. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, wouldn't say that. I mean, the Yakuza said it's very authentic. So. <laughs> and we can trust the Yakuza. <laughs> okay, another let. Another person we'll probably see is this lad called Christopher, representing Sweden. Yeah, I can tell. His weapon of mech mass, of mass sex, sex appeal. appeal. Seems like the Swedes. He he is he is a Swiss. Swiss. Sorry, I always confuse those two. Fuck. Yeah, Switzerland's the Red Cross. Yeah. With yeah, they're they're not known for their sex appeal. No, they're, they're not. Known for You're having right. their bank accounts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and chocolate. And cheese. Very fucking good chocolate. Uh, and really nice architecture. Oh, yeah, hang on, right, okay, uh, back to it. Right. <laughs> Visit Switzerland, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he is 25, and as ice skaters go, apparently that's, that's pushing the age limit for what he's doing. And like he has a quite, he's quite mature when he skates. His choreography is, is, is quite, attracts a lot of like, female attention and stuff like that, because it's quite uh erotic um uh but you know he's quite body confident and stuff like that i suppose you'd have to be he <laughs> he's known uh, and looked up to victor for probably the longest out of all of them and he's done quite well for himself i don't i don't know if he's ever won one but because it has been a little while since i've seen this anime i won't lie but yeah, he's he's a nice lad. He really is. He's a good he's a good lad. Bit of a bit of a mm. mentor figure sometimes. You know. Yeah, he's yeah he's good. He's a good lad. I quite like the amount right. of sportsmanship which is being displayed here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's kind of nice that they're not all yeah. sort of rivals. It's just like yeah, it's a it's a competition. Yeah, no one's doing anything sinister like slashing the shoelaces or. Yeah, that's it. I don't know how you sabotage yeah, figure skaters. <laughs> Well, and no one's injecting each other in the buttocks with, like, uh, I don't know, performance-enhancing <laughs> drugs or anything. Yuri, the secret to winning this competition is friendship. Friendship and roids. I'm sure there's someone... Something will be in injected into someone's butt in the fix we're about to read. Hey! <laughs> I'm talking about pounding. You saw well, that this... low-hanging fruit, this... and you went for it. Much like Victor, I saw an opening and I plunged straight for it. <laughs> Stop. This is Yuri's best friend, and he is representing Thailand. He is a lovely he's lad. He's got pet hamsters. So when you put, say like, best friend, Thailand back on the map. Oh, he's best friend, he's adorable. They, yeah. Uh, he, they were rink mates together, and like he's he's very positive, and he... like he's very supportive of. Him and Victor's relationship, and yeah, he's just a he's just a lovely bloke. He's I think it's the optimistic. jacket, but this to me is Rock Lee from the timeline where everyone's happy. 
instead of the Naruto timeline. <laughs> yeah, and where he does yes. his eyebrows, I guess. Instead of studying the punch, he uh, he figure skates and looks after hamsters. He figure skates. Nice. He's lovely. I hope nothing bad happens Best to boy. him. Nothing oh, bad God. happens to him, because this is a whole yeah, anime. Yeah, but what about in the fix? I cannot speak for the fix. We're about to find out. Cinnamon roll. <laughs> right. Okay. Is is. Funnily enough, we've put in Hot Only and Smash or Pass. I've put all these into the Smash and Pass thing, and we've not yeah. said if we're going to Smash uh, or Pass them. Is that a part of like what we have to do, or shall we skip it? I th- I, th- I think it is. Let's have a look. Yeah. Uh, so, Nick, who are you smashing? Um, smash, 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 pass, smash, probably. Sorry, which one's which one are you passing on? Oh, um, JJ. He's yeah. passing on JJ. Ah. I think. He looks yeah. like he'd be incredibly irritating. Yeah, I see him being very competitive. I think I'd pass. Yeah, I can see him coming and then going <laughs> JJ style, and you'd be like, I am, get out. Like, <laughs> the, the the thing is, I'm I'm more of a fan of rather than if you get utterly destroyed by somebody in a sport, I would rather it be somebody like Gomez Adams. You know, somebody who destroys you but then picks you up again afterwards. You heard it here first. Nick yeah. wants to be destroyed by Gomez Adams. <laughs> it's no secret, really. But anyway. Um, no, that's fair. Morticia's lucky to have him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, the only reason I don't have a bigger crush on Morticia is because I know that she'd never leave Gomez. Because anyway. you have a bigger crush on Gomez. <laughs> Grace, All smash right. or pass? Oh, Maybe. me. Okay. Yeah, you do it. Oh, yeah, <sighs> I'm this one. <laughs> it's my turn, bitch. <sighs> Look! Look into you. Look, you've got a boy who can do both, either nice or like good. <laughs> he boy can be or your or devil daddy. or angel. <laughs> <laughs> he can be a devil or yeah, angel. Yeah, exactly. I I hate to say it because <laughs> I think I'd wait a couple of years for ev- for Nicholson. evil Yuri. Not gonna lie. Okay, he's twenty three. Evil Yuri, who's fifteen. He's not evil. He's just Russian, bro. <laughs> Back that ass up. I'm 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 backing away. <laughs> I, I I feel like saying. I feel like you were saying waiting for the for the blonde kid to grow up. Is no, it's not. Because <laughs> he he's not oh, on fine. the list. Yeah, but he he's the cutest one. That's the thing. Yeah, but you would smash him. He's fifteen. We're not talking about the fifteen-year-old James. The thing is, I suspect the fandom won't care. That's not. Okay. Point. Yeah, probably Yuri. Uh, see, the thing is, you you pick Yuri, and then three, four Dilfs. And I'm not really here for Dilfs. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, but it's true. No taste. So you prob- you'd probably go for, for cute boy... Uh, What's Katsuki. the man from Kazakhstan's name again? His name is Otabek. You've picked the bloke from Pokemon that everyone's soft on. No, I, I feel like The business like he's Pokemon a lot man, whose name I've forgotten. Believe it or not, this guy's a teen. <laughs> what? <laughs> he's wow. a teenager. He He's... He's just from Kazakhstan. Oh, he's man. just had a shit one. No, <laughs> no, no, no. He's not really. He's a lovely bloke. <laughs> he's, he's. You just picked a look just, at a picture great. where he's just, not aged particularly well. Hmm. I've picked everything. I've picked is from oh, the show. Not like fan art or anything. There are better looking photos of him. That's fair. I'll have a look. But yeah, my pick is Yuri. I'd okay. probably pass on the rest. Fair enough. Grace, right. you've dodged the question. Who would you oh, smash? Well, I'm... Okay, so I, I would pet Yuri, both Yuri's, just like look after them. I wouldn't okay. smash him. Victor, Victor, I I can't take seriously enough. Like I think he'd be more like a pet donk, and that'd really annoy me. <laughs> uh, to himbo for you. To him both me. Otvek, I, I think I could have... Yeah, I'd probably smash Otvek. Because he looks because, like the business like, Pokemon man. I don't know. <laughs> Stoic sex. Stoic sex. Stoic sex. <laughs> Say nothing, leave afterwards. Nod. <laughs> <laughs> On your way out. <laughs> wow. JJ, I would probably go to prison for absolutely <laughs> violating him. Because he oh, right. <laughs> I'd I'd literally smash him with like a fucking ham like bat with a <laughs> oh that kind of violence. What's, what's so wrong with him? <laughs> no, he just annoys me. He annoyed me throughout the entire. See, time. I find like, that oh, interesting because I mean, me... he's not 
he's not a bad lad, but I was just like, ugh. <laughs> Me and Nick both look at him and see Joseph Joestar, yeah. who you are a fan of, but why, why not now? Uh, I feel like he's portrayed differently. The thing is, Joseph Joestar I'd quite like to go for a pint with, but I reckon this mm. guy is irritating as fuck. Also, he <laughs> he's canonic- canonically like got a go. I see. <laughs> Since he's when has that stopped? <laughs> he may be by, but he's out of the gay club. Since when has that stopped you? Uh, it's okay. I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you why, and this is a minor spoiler. So basically, like, there's this very ambiguous because all the romance in this is very ambiguous. Uh, Yuri and Victor essentially okay. get engaged hey, before nice. before the thing. And he sees this, and instead of saying, oh, congratulations and all that shit, he goes, if I win, I'm going to marry my girlfriend. And oh, makes it this big deal risky. that he's going to win. And it's like, anyway. he, he just, he, I know, and he just, he just, I know, no, here's the point, he just steps on their moment. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. He just sort of, he, he, he makes it about him, and it's just like, shut See, my first up. thought was going, oh, no, that means you're going to die this episode. <laughs> Because that's what happens when you say, when we're done, I'm going to propose. No. Y- you always get shot. Yeah, it is the... No matter what anime you're in. I think... That usually is the equivalent of the uh, the scene in the Vietnam War movie where one of the soldiers is talking about, when we get through all of this madness, I'm going to move down south and buy a farm and live off the land and get a Yeah, nice it's job. exactly the same trope. And then in the next Guys, scene... This is a, this is a fucking figure skating so? anime and nothing bad happens. And I've told okay. you once, I'll tell you again, Look, but I've told you before. Peppa Stop Pig it. could say, when I get home, I'm going to propose, and a bullet will just appear out of the fabric of reality. Yeah, in the next and scene... shoot Peppa dead. That's it. In oh the next scene, he will, he will be staggering around with a hole yeah. in his chest. <laughs> Clutching his left arm, or the remains of his left arm, with the, his right arm. Yeah, I don't make the rules. That's what happens if you say you're going to propose when you finish a task. Yeah, and then... Right, so what happens is that he loses the match, but he proposes oh, okay. anyway. Oh, okay. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah. Happy Your ending. realize is immune now, to the up. effects <laughs> of what happens when you say you're going to propose. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's <that's> right. <laughs> We, we can stop getting Perfect. ahead of ourselves now. So, is this a finished story? Uh, yes. Okay. And it's, it has been a while, so... I think if you're listening to this and you had interest in Yuri on Ice, you've had plenty of time. Yeah, not that we just haven't spoiled, like, half the fucking main plot points in our rundown of the characters. Victor kills Dumbledore. But, you know, you guys, you know we're very spoiler-heavy by now. We've been doing this for I'd hope years. so. And exactly. if you're only just tuning in, welcome aboard. We're glad to have exactly. you. Exactly. But we are very spoiler heavy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, is there anything else we want to... Oh yeah, predictions. Who do you expect to see getting paired? All Yuri Victor all the time. Main pairing, uh, Yuri and Victor. Mm-hmm. And second pairing will probably be Otbeck and Russian Yuri. Yuri Blitzky. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I can believe that. Um, Yuri on Yuri, possibly. Yeah, maybe. I mean, the name's there. It's it's bound to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The ship name is it's already baked into the show. Well, yeah, exactly. Yuri's on ice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Yuri on ice. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for getting into this. Unless there's any other. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> so, yeah. So I would like to see. I mean, we made the joke. I know. If we can find a fic with Yuri Gagarin in it, I will be quite happy. I think that would be very funny. Um, if anyone know, if anyone listening wants to send me that fic, I'll happily read the whole thing. Yeah, we'll if do. If we don't a, find it, we'll do a fucking fanfic and chill on it. Exactly. Speaking of which, dear listener, let me take yeah. this moment to plug our second show, fanfic. And plug chill. our second show. Mm. Uh, on Fridays, you can listen to us on our other channel, Fanfix and Chill. You can find a link to it uh, in the show notes. Uh, we do dramatic readings with silly voices. Yep. It's a lot of fun. Did you hear that, how smooth that was? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine this smooth voice, but reading fanfiction. A whole fanfiction. And chilling. And chilling. Anyway. Uh, yeah, this looks good. Uh, 
Normally we talk about our experiences with this. I've not seen any Yuri on Ice. So maybe between now and the next episode I'll try and find some time to watch it and see what happens. It should be on your watch list. It is on my run- watch list on Crunchyroll because I know <laughs> last year, possibly the year before, you broke into my house <laughs> and you watched several episodes of Yuri on Ice. On I my actually watched all of it on your account. You watched the. Oh, well, there we go. I, I don't have to watch it. I've watched the whole thing. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I've watched the whole thing as well. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. That was a lie. You, you, you've not seen <laughs> Yuri on Ice. <laughs> Don't knock it till you tried it, Nick. You should at least. I'm not. I just doubt that Nick has seen Yuri on Ice. No, that's what I was saying to Nick because he's trying to weasel his way out of it. Oh, well, true. yeah, it's you know, it, I found the bit where JJ got into a skating accident. It was kind of, <laughs> kind of a bummer for him. Yeah. Even though he's so unlikable, and you know, the secret thirteenth episode where JJ says. Yeah, I'm going to go home and propose, and then he gets into a plane accident yeah. and has to survive on a rocky mountain for three months. That's it, and then there's the then there's the beach episode, which is just filler, mm-hmm. so yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of the worst beach episodes, because there's no ice at all, which yes. means there's no figure skating. Yuri there's no sand. beach episode. Well, that's why they didn't do a beach episode, because there was no ice, <laughs> and the characters were just stood there going, I don't know, guys. Yeah, what do we do now? We could learn to do beach volleyball. <laughs> This isn't going to work, Yuri, because we don't have big jugs. That's a no Top Gun man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's plenty of ass in spandex in this anime. We should probably. Oh, we. Ah, I was about to make the joke we should do with the Top Gun episode. This is actually a good time to mention if you didn't listen to our filler episode. Because of the strikes, we're not covering any films and TV. Yeah. Because, fuck them. This is it. There was that thing saying don't promote any film and TV while the strike's going on, so we're not... Yeah, solidarity. Is or rather, we we might promote some TV, but it's going to be British TV. Yeah, exclusively British TV, because as far as we know, there's no plans for the actors and writers to strike over here. Not that I'm aware of, no. Well, not yet. That anyway. does mean no good omens, though, because it's an Amazon thing. Yeah, which is a shame, because, of course, that would look really, really good for our listening figures, but never mind. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Damn you, David Tennant. <laughs> if we achieve criticism for anything, it's for sticking too rigidly to our principles. Exactly. You don't get us, we're part of the union. Exactly. I mean, we're not, but, you know. We're not, no. We're not scabs. We We're ain't. Not, we ain't no scabs. Yeah, we ain't no scab. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, no promotional stuff. So we're just sticking to anime and video games for now, yeah. and British TV. Yes. Anyway, shall we get into it? I really wanted to uh, make yeah. the joke. The shipping forecast sponsored by Amazon Prime. Then. But... No. <laughs> we couldn't be less sponsored by Amazon Prime. But yeah, we can cut that out. Good. I don't know. It just came into my head. It sounded funny. Fuck Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Fuck Beth Jesus. Did you guys watch the Virgin launch, by the way? No. Their spaceship looks way better than Jeff Bezos' spaceship. Okay, so can we go on a brief tangent? Yeah, go on. Right then, out of out of the billionaires which want to go to space, yeah. Richard Branson is the one I respect the most. Yes. Because Jeff Bezos, he's doing it because uh, he's got money. And what else is going to spend the money on? It's a, basically a dick-waving exercise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elon Musk, he's doing it because There's, of the ego trip. Yeah. No explanation needed. Elon Musk is a twat. Yeah, exactly. He's doing it for the ego trip. Richard Branson is doing it because ever since he was a small boy, he wanted to go to space. And that I can exactly. kind of respect. So. I, I don't know what kind of reprehensible things he's done to uh, to get all his money to go to space, but I can... If you've got to pick one dickhead... Yeah. Right then, I think I'm going to do what I usually do uh, with fandoms I don't know a lot about. Although, Grace did a really good job of explaining it, so at least I... Yeah, I feel informed. I I, I do feel in time. To be fair, I don't think you need to know much, because a lot of what I'm seeing in the top, it's all Alpha, Beta, Omega, which is something we are intimately (laughs) familiar with. (laughs) Oh no. Fantastic. So the second most popular fic is called You You Can't Plan for Anything by Rivdev. Okay. Uh let me just post it. There we go. This is uh Yuri Katsuki and Victor. Mm-hmm. Um 
Yuri is an Omega, you'll be shocked to hear. No, really? Yeah. Oh, bless you. Slow build. You know, instead of playing who who do we think is going to pair up, is maybe we should start playing who is the Omega. Because, yeah. Oh, that's, that's too easy. <laughs> Spot that's the bottom. It's, yeah, because it, it is, oh. is going to be... Uh, I suppose we are going to find ABO of nearly every fandom that's out there. This one's 28 chapters long. Wow. Uh, 168,000 words. Oh shit, it is. 13,000 mm-hmm. comments, been up since 2016. I didn't know 13,000 comments. Yeah, well, well Jesus. No, close to 14,000. It's all nice. <laughs> You're all just like, four. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> k- kink negotiation is a tag. Yeah. <laughs> it's what they do at the United Nations. I'm sorry, mate. Best thing I can do is a water sports kink. <laughs> mm, how about I'll give I'll give you two ABOs for that water sports. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's going to have to be a better offer. Two ABOs and a muscle mummy kink. Oh. I'll give you a not kink. I, I can oh, work. Yeah. I can work in a muscle mummy. Hey. Sold. Nice. <laughs> I think all three of us can work in a muscle mummy. To be fair. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I will just say I'm. I don't know if I've understood this correctly, but if I have, I'm not going to read the whole fic to find out. Okay. Notting dildos. That's a very impressive piece of technology. If that works the way I think it does. I mean. What a bit of it expands. Yeah, bit of it. Yeah. I mean, I think it might just be a dildo with a big old knot at the bottom. Uh. I mean, I can s- I can see how like you could make it work. For more details, please right, see the our technology sponsor, exists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wondered why sailors measure things in knots when they travel? Oh come on. <laughs> yeah, they frequently do. I should actually say the top fic is called "Until My Feet Bleed and My Heart Aches." The third most popular fic is actually a spin-off of the first most popular fic. Oh really? So, oh, I- so this this must be prolific. That one's also got 9,000 comments. Sorry, 9,229 comments, which is over 9,000 comments. This is a popular fandom. Yeah. I mean, the correct answer there, Nick, is, What? 9,000? Yes, I know it was. I I, I really wanted to get some ancient memes into this episode. I realised it's been a long day. (laughs) That was lost to history. That was so ancient. (laughs) Well, as a meme anthropologist... I wanted to get that in there. Yeah, honestly, mate, that was sold that the British are looking for it to take back to the museum. <laughs> the <laughs> British are going to steal <laughs> fucking... I've, I've forgotten his name. Vegeta. Vegeta, yeah. <laughs> the British are going to kidnap Vegeta and put him in a museum. <laughs> There's a fake prompt, guys, if anyone wants that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have someone writing, the British want to steal Vegeta to put him in a museum. Indiana Jones and the quest for the dead memes. The long dead (laughs) memes. Oh, God. But yeah, until my feet ache is... Hmm. Are Yuri and Victor rivals, Grace? Uh, I mean, yeah, in the first... Like, years ago, off-screen, they compete for the title. Oh, okay. Uh, and like obviously Vix comes first, and Yuri is like quite low down. So this seems to be an AU where they hate each other until they love each other. Mm. All right. Like so, it carries on the rivalness the whole way through, and then eventually they pound. Oh, okay. Just to keep it as romantic as possible. <laughs> enemies to lovers. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the most popular one is enemies to lovers, with thirty thousand kudos. Almost double the um, ABO one I mentioned. Oh, cute. Right then, I've found something here. Okay. Okay. I would just like to read the summary first. Okay. Yuri, an ex-Yakuza, and now a husband, does his best (laughs) to give his husband, Victor, a better life. Uh, If I can just share this in the, uh, the part one. This is Loving an Ex-Yakuza by Rahape Soy Hands. God, I hope this is going to be like, where the hell's husband? <laughs> I really hope it's like, yeah, Kiri's just going to show up because this is 
like a side story for him. So yeah, it, it would be nice. He's not in the tags, but you never know. Um, but inspired by Spy Family. Inspired ah. by Spy Family. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So there we go. Tie into the last uh, the last episode arc. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, apparently they're they're married. Uh, he used to be an assassin. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, can I, I just, there's a standalone line here I just have to read. Mm. Yuri would rather die dishonorably than lose his rear virginity to some old pervert. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what a line. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. It was Yuri who had to run and try and hide among the streets of Tokyo while he was chased by other members who tried to force him to return, preferably alive, and all I... because he refused to marry their 70-year-old leader. Oh bloody hell. Do the Yakuza do that? It's not like beginnings. No. At the risk of getting a oh. actually, in my brain. probably. I don't actually know. I'm, I, I've got a confession to make. I don't actually know anything about the real Yakuza. No. I played, I played the Yakuza games. I watched Way of the House Husband. And that's where my knowledge ends. <laughs> and neither <laughs> Kiryu nor... <laughs> um, a f- not Kiryu from Way of the House Husband would do that. <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> I know they are. They are quite wholesome characters, so I can't exactly. If it, if Which is how was... I could picture Yuri perfectly within the Yakuza, because it's all just fluffy boys doing karaoke, as yeah. far as I'm aware. Yeah, this is this is it. <laughs> Fucking hell! Which is the joke, because Yakuza is a mob. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're terrible people <laughs> like, in real life. It's lost yeah. on you. The joke is now lost on you because they're bad people. And the joke is that these are good people. It's just silly. <laughs> it's silly. <laughs> it starts with like fluffy boys singing karaoke, and it ends in like I don't know, Super Dad, which is mm-hmm. exactly what Kiryu turns into. Super Granddad by yeah. the end of the game. Super Granddad. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a mini game about like pet looking after your grandson, and like you've got to use the motion controls to like make sure he's burped and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. That is not a word of a lie. Oh, so this fits. So, what else oh, have we lovely. seen? Yeah, let's get back to this. That might be something that I might read. You know what, next on to something. I'm going to look for crossovers, because I'm a little bit out of my depth. <laughs> oh, wow. I can only describe the... Oh, it's... it's. <laughs> There's a fic here. They've, they've just sort of... They've gathered, like, the... It's like the Avengers of Yaoi. Yeah. Like, the crossovers we have here is... <laughs> Yuri on Ice, Free, yeah. Oran Host Club, Axis Powers Italia, Black Butler. Bloody hell. So it's... It's a crossover of all of them. The, the Yowie Cinematic Universe. The Yowie Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> because someone said earlier, um, Yuri looks like reminds you of Superman when okay. he takes oh, yeah. his glasses on off. I literally just came across Superman Super Soft Ass. Wow. Five stars don't Ooh. twinkle. That is a title. Is that Yuri is, is Superman. Victor has the hots for Yuri, the journalist. Yuri keeps saving Victor as Superman. Victor accidentally emits his feelings for Superman. That's Superman, it, that's the story. Superman. Oh, and Victor is absolutely addicted to Yuri's ass and practically worships it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that arts. That is... <laughs> <laughs> It's it's very good art, very good. <laughs> yeah, he he got a he he. Said. <laughs> the attention to detail on the cheeks is truly something. <laughs> I know it the thing is digging in. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Like, that, <laughs> it's a very impressive ass. I thought you'd enjoy that. <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Wait, what? Hold on, I have to check something. I skimmed through and some words were near each other and I just want to make sure I saw what I thought I saw. Okay. Oh, God. I saw something about condoms and I was one, and then discussion of Superman next to it and I was like, are they discussing that condoms won't work on Superman? Because they probably don't. <laughs> I mean, they might. I mean... I mean, the dude's got laser vision. Yeah. Like. So, so when a human male comes, it comes out at around 30 miles an hour, right? Yeah. No. And Superman no. is super strong. Faster than a speeding it's bullet. Not, it's not yeah. thirty. More powerful than a locomotive. <laughs> no, that, that's the average. Mm, I was told it. Was like best. the the speed the liquid's launched out of. It doesn't travel thirty miles, but that's the speed it goes at. Yeah, I was it told goes at thirty miles an hour. Never mind. We're arguing over nothing. <laughs> Forty-five kilometers per hour. I don't know what that is in miles. Oh, do you know the place is this fucking podcast? I'm, I'm double checking. Twenty-five. We were both wrong. Well, I mean, 25, in the 30... 
Much like all men, when it comes to penises, I round upwards. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) That's funny, that's staying. Yeah, any tales of driving heroism too. I'm not doing 70, I'm doing at least 120. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, No, it's just they bought a lot of condoms, was the line I saw before I skimmed past. Uh, Okay, I might have found something. Okay. Um, The... The summary drew me to this one. I will just just post it. So this is Dark Room by Why Do You Make Hot Noodles on Such a Hot Day? Okay. We've got our boy Yuri, our boy Victor. And, uh, yeah, the summary is Victor thinks pride has gotten to hetero. As a patron of the mm. arts, he believes the best piano bars are gay piano bars, but many of them end up having a primarily straight audience. Okay. As a connoisseur of vacation destinations, he believes the best of these are results for the LGBTQ community, but an awful lot of the tourists are straight. And damn it, even the dark room in the back of the gay bar he's visiting has straight people in it. Okay. Um, Is there such thing as gay holiday destinations? I don't see why not. Um, As in, like, not just gay bars, but gay resorts. I'm not talking about Brighton, for example, where it's sort of nominally (laughs) considered a gay place. Or the Isle of Lesbos. Or that... That is not... <laughs> Shut up, Nick. <laughs> I, mean, I wish, but... <laughs> Fucking hell. Like, oh, the whole Isle of Lesbos. Yeah. Oh, Nick. <laughs> right. You are truly innocent and naive. Did you go there and were just deeply disappointed? No, I've, I, honestly, I've, I've never been to... I want to say Greece... Yes. Yeah, I've never, I've never been to Greece or any of its islands. I mean, I'd quite like to go because I kind of like old architecture. But yeah, mm. I have yeah. never been yet. Gay resorts. I mean, there are recommendations. I don't know if there's any that are actually just. Yeah. Oh no, there are. Oh. There absolutely are. Okay. Well, like entire towns. There's no way anything heterosexual goes on at somewhere called the Axel Hotel in Madrid. <laughs> Okay. They might just be really into cars, Jim. Do you want to go and find out? No. I'll pay. Because <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> no, yeah, Ax- Axel Hotels is a specifically gay thing, mm. apparently. Oh, I see. Not just really big fans of Crazy Frog. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the Axel F Hotel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's next door. Yeah. No. Hang on, let me just ruin my search history. Axel Hotel. Yep. This Hotel is... chain focused on the gay community. This is where Jim gets drunk and books a holiday. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't afford it. <laughs> gay? Oh, Axel Hotel is in, located in the middle of the Gay Zample, a gay area in Barcelona. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> you come back. Yeah, help... So, James, I hear you're an otter now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, f- it's funny you should say that. You know, it was mostly men, but they were really, really friendly. Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely bunch. Yeah, what a lovely bunch of people. <laughs> Kept buying me drinks. That doesn't normally happen at no. bars. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just show you this shot from the website. It made me laugh just because it's, it's such a heterosexual oh, way of posting this. Like, Oh, is it quite on the nose? Like, if no, if you, if you went to a hotel website, you'd have a woman doing that pose. Okay, let's is what I mean. Have it's in general. Oh, it's uh. I see. Yeah. It's male empowerment. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. No, you can. You it's can... it's like the male gaze being used on men, like yeah. in exactly the same way. Yeah, it's which it's I find like, kind of interesting. It's ass cleavage. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's um. It does exactly what it says on the tin. That. Exactly. Mm. Like. I, I find that interesting, don't you? That it's like that the male gaze is more or less the same between gay men and straight men. You mean you're just slightly pervy? <laughs> yeah, that's... it's just being pervy. <laughs> I just find that interesting. I thought maybe it would be it would be a bit different, but I don't know. Yeah, like uh, a well turned but fully clothed man, sort of like in a hotel foyer, smiling mm-hmm. and, and welcoming you. But yeah. no, it's uh, apparently like, they advertise them in exactly the same way they advertise lads hotels in Ibiza. Exactly. Yeah, it's there's ways to sexualize men aimed at women, and there's a ways to sexualize men aimed at men. Mm. And yeah, if you're sexualizing, that's interesting. I think yeah, if you're sexualizing a man for a woman, it's like they're wearing the suit. But yes. there's no fucking shirt under it, and they got their abs out and shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or they're a fireman with the fireman outfit. Or they're dressed as a fireman. With their abs out again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
It's it's like half baked job profession. <laughs> yeah, but men is just how close can we get to the Jennies without actually showing them? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're, we're going off this literally yeah. one post. That was a fascinating bit others. of sociology, but it's time to move on. <laughs> God's sake. Oh dear. Hey, I've got bingo. Well, we found. Harry Potter crossover. Hey. Oh, no. The boy who lived to make history, Death on Ice. Fucking hell. <laughs> Just the title alone. <laughs> Harry James Potter was the master of death, and after some time in the wizarding world, he found out that the life he'd been living was restricting. Everyone expects him to be a hero of all time. Sorry, a hero all the time. Expects him to want to chase dark wizards. So he used his powers as the master of death to rebirth himself as Katsuki Yuri. To be just Yuri, not Harry Potter. <laughs> this is batshit. Yeah. <laughs> this is by Ocean Myth Yormaganda. Oh, this... Yeah, post it, please. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting the... I'd like to see this. I mean, I'm sure it's written well, but that is such a premise, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Imagine, okay, pitch meeting, Harry Potter, he, he gives it all up to Yeah, me. post Voldemort, he's going to move to Japan to become a figure skater. Shit up. You know what? better what jk could have written yeah oh 100 percent. i suppose it's kind of like those books or video games here i'm looking at you stardew valley where you've got your office job that you're bored of and you just decide to fuck it all off and set up life in and become a figure skater and become something other than your boring office job something real something authentic figure skater figure skater yeah Mm mm-hmm yeah, this... But yeah, enjoy. Yeah, this looks interesting. Also, JJ is a wizard. Oh, for fuck, of course he is. I mean, he kind of is. Yeah. I, I'd accept that as canon for the main show, to be fair. <laughs> Why? He, he seems fairly magical, if you ask me. <laughs> but not in a good way. Oh, in a good way. That's, wow, actually, he goes right back and starts from birth. Wait, what? <laughs> like, I'm just reading the bottom of it, spoiler alert, by the way, but yeah, Harry is literally reborn. He doesn't just inhabit the body of, of Yuri. Oh, it's a reincarnation thing. Yeah, he, okay. he gets reincarnated as Yuri. We found a fucking icicle on him. I should mention, if anyone hears me pronounce anything funny, it's not me transforming into Matt Berry as much as I'd like it to be. I've hurt my back, and if I move the wrong way, it'll make me go, ah... <laughs> to be fair, like I you, did wish, that last... you wish you could talk like Oh, that. I'd love to transform into... Walking I'd love to speak. transform into Matthew Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Do not listen to this tape in the, in care. the care. Stop. <laughs> Sorry. Ow. It's Grace, it's okay. I can uh, I can make it up to you. No, you can't. I can. This is called Rivals AU Bonuses. Right. Crossover with the Untamed. Oh! Yeah, by Lily underscore Winterwood. Oh, rolling with the punches. Well, she's, well, she's uh, done it, but you haven't. Oh. So she can make it up to you. Because she put all the effort in, you just brought it to my Oh. Opinion. So they can make it up to you. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. They've they've gone up in my estimation. You, you've remained the same. Oh. Oh, confess. <laughs> this, is, this is competitive cultivation. Basically, okay. if the Hunger Games were Asian. Oh. Wait. Because to no, us... That's just that that's battle royale. <laughs> just I, I we just... already have that. <laughs> no, hang on. No, no, no. They've written if you like me just last week had no idea what the fuck competitive cultivation is. You might be thinking, how is John Oliver going to ru- ruin gardening competitions? <laughs> because to us English speakers, the term competitive cultivation sounds like a bunch of people trying to win first prize at the local county <laughs> fair for biggest. You're not wrong. Fair. Yeah. I don't care if that thing is the size of my head. The only reason we'll use for veg for that big is a dildo, and I'm not putting it out of my mouth. <laughs> but, but to the 20 or so East Asian countries that participate in the International Night Hunting Union's competitions, competitive cultivation, or comp cult is a big fucking deal. This sounds Bonus interesting. Bonus season, will it? We may, hang on, let's look this up. Have, have you used a th- I don't think it's real. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up anyway, just in case it is. Yeah, let's let's have a look. Twenty thousand words. This is. It's not real. It's not. Aww. Aww. Did you really like cultivation Aww. in the, in the untamed? It's it's all just like wire flying and 
Like, I, I know. I, I know. But... Looking pretty. I don't really. <laughs> it can't really be a thing, right? <laughs> I. Uh, I wanted to believe. I'm sorry. I've let you down once again. It won't be the last time. I know. <laughs> so, let me ask you guys a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his... <laughs> Sorry, what were you going to say? Are you ready for your daily dose of cheap, unscripted entertainment churned out to cater for the lowest common denominator? That's our podcast. What about it? <laughs> I would like to introduce you to Come Dine With Me by The Western Door. Is, is this... Is this the Come Dine With Me I'm familiar with? Yeah, it's it's the final night of competition for Come Dine With Me. Oh my lord. Okay, so, Come Dine With Me, for the international audience. It's a UK show. Yes. You get like three or four people. It's like a game show, but you've got to cook dinner for each other, and they rate the dinner based on like how it's presented and everything. Oh, yeah, it's like over is. four nights, and you scored on your food, your host, ship... How much of a good time they had, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, everybody gets together in a room and they find out who's won. And usually there is some quality bitching. They're <laughs> usually encouraged to be as catty as possible yeah. about each other's cooking because that it's... makes good TV. Exactly. Yeah. Most and of... this is Yuri and Victor competing in that. Yeah, this is it. They are the mysterious couple, uh, Victor and Yuri. Will they be the ones to take home the prize, and will their guests ever find out what it is they actually do? Oh. So, yeah. And this this is written like a script for Come, D- Come Dine With Me, even down to having the really catty narrator. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Because the narrator in Come Dine With Me is always brutally savage about I, amateur cooks. I think it's He's Harry like, Hill. oh, I wouldn't do that with a lemon posset and shit like that. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. It's night three, and tonight's host, Victor and Yuri, are international retirees. That was too good. <laughs> That's alarming. That is frightening. Yes, we get it. You're both terribly in love. But how does beet soup fit in with your evening of romance? <laughs> <laughs> this is spot on. Like They've nailed Come Dine With Me as a fic. Fanfics and chill. If you write to them, sure, we can do it. So, we... I'm about to cross a line that we don't normally cross on this show, but I think you'll understand why. Okay. So this is a fic called Sugarless Love by Kunogi Haruyuki. This is another crossover. Okay. Between Yuri on Ice and Japanese figure skating real person fics. Oh, holy shit, okay. If you want to learn anything about real world figure skating, this might be a good way to do just that. Oh my lord. Yeah. I don't know anything about figure skating. No, I don't. Like, I saw, the words, but, I saw the words Grand Prix and I got really excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, yeah, uh, here we go. Nobody said it would be easy. At the Grand Prix final... shit Chalunant is a little shit, apparently. In the tags. Yeah. Sugar Daddy That's, jokes. We all like that. You is, heard it here. Um, Precious is uh, Yuri's best friend from Thailand. Oh, I see. I, was, I thought that might be a real figure skater, to be honest. But yeah, I find this interesting. But... Yeah. People have worked it in. Yeah, I suppose if you wanted to watch, if you watch Yuri on Ice and thought, yeah, I'd like a bit of that life, mm. I'd like to support the my local figure skater with what they do. Then I guess this yeah. is a gateway to that. I can believe it. Yeah, cool. Grace, how accurate to figure skating is the show, in your opinion? As someone who knows next to nothing about figure skating. Or, oh, okay, so or... you you didn't learn anything about figure skating from watching it, is what I'm. I mean, I guess I, I'm I know for. about a triple lutz. I knew a little bit. Okay. Uh, I think I knew a little bit about some of the moves, like the jumps, but ultimately, okay. not a lot. Because there are some sports anime that put a lot of research into what they're making. Mm. Hmm. Like Birdie Wing, for example. Can, and... <laughs> can I just ask a question about... Go on. You know when they're doing the figure skating stuff... Do they do that that really really dramatic anime thing? You know where um... <gasps> that stance. He's gonna do a triple yeah, bird. <gasps> what a crazy Ivan! Nobody's been Nanny. successful of uh, those since 1996. <laughs> you know that sort of thing. Like the um... things they do in Initial D. Because I'm a let me f- for that. <laughs> let me flashbacks when my father taught me how to do a double pirouette. <laughs> I mean, I mean, ah. there are there are like flashbacks during the choreography yes. oh. yeah there is there is that there is like i'm thinking oh, I'm, so I'm, I'm trying that. to emulate the feeling of like 
my granddad looking after me as a child and shit like that. And I'm and there's this one bit where it, like Yuri is like, I don't know how to be sexy, so I'm just going to pretend I want this my favourite dinner to chase me. <laughs> <laughs> alluringly <laughs> oh he's such a fluffy boy he's such a fluffy boy <laughs> i think that explains why i've seen so many asexual yuri tags to be honest hmm. he just wants the pork cutlet bowl bless him don't we all yeah maybe he's uh... we all want a bit of victor's pork cutlet bowl <laughs> is that what they're calling that's, it now that's not what you meant is it never mind uh... <laughs> yeah maybe he's not asexual maybe he's just oblivious fun it's oh, yeah, this is another tangent um there's there's a very common trope in anime where there's one male character and he's surrounded by women who just want the D. Yeah. Like, despite him being a very bland man who was never flirted in his life, they all really want the D. And I've started interpreting them as asexual characters, and it's honestly improved the experience, because I'm not a fan of that trope usually. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Hmm. But the I've been playing the Trail series, and... The new male protagonist is very much the oblivious, while all the women just throw themselves at him. Yeah, and it's a very fun interpretation to watch. It. It's like it's not that he's oblivious; he's just really not interested, <laughs> and it's just sort of trying to politely decline them and be like, "No, I'm not interested in any of this. Just leave me alone." <laughs> and yeah, aiming for the no sex ending. Exactly. Yeah, which is not what I did in Trails to Azure, but that's another story. I see. Anyway. Grace has shared a picture. Oh, no. I remember years ago, there was a theory that this fella was the inspiration... Um, oh, I can see it. ...for Victor. And Who I think he? he's a... Cor- it was, I, th- I don't actually know if this is the picture of the guy, but this was apparently a choreographer for ice skating. Okay. Uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can I can see it. He's even got the same sort of face shape. Yeah. Ooh. Like I I think more digging needs to be put into this myth, but like mm. I I don't I don't know what's true. <laughs> I just remember it being a thing that I feel like there was also like I feel like at some point there was a lot of talk because a lot of the characters from the show seem to be based on figure real life figure skaters so i like otbeck outland there is like a figure skater from kazakhstan who is also a dj who has like a similar name and uh that's what he does in the show as well and it's just like uh and i think there's also a yuri uh, a similar year to someone similar to Yuri Katsuki as well. Hmm. Oh, okay. But I don't know. You have to look into it. I think I might. Sorry, back to the fix. No, that's fine. We've been doing tangents all day. You're allowed a couple. Yeah, 100%. I, I feel like mine didn't stray that far. Even more reason to keep it. But oh. I just found something... In tr- this. I'm sorry, this is probably just going to appeal to me and Nick as sort of history nerds. Okay. I found a fic that's a crossover with something called The Irony of Fate. Okay. Which turns out to be a Soviet film made in the 1970s. Okay. And I just find that fascinating. That's that... weirdly specific. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've, no, I've put it in the right one. So if I just go... So it's, it's called Enjoy Your Bath by Glitter Pile. Yeah, The Irony of Fate. That's had four fics written about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's super niche by the sounds of it. Glitter which is why I'm interested. And, and... Yeah, I see. It's a Russian rom-com. Sorry, a Soviet rom-com, I should say. Oh, okay. Because it was made in the 1970s. I can I can already see it. It's a bit like Friends, but the apartment's tiny. It's in a concrete monstrosity. It's... Oh, I hope... <laughs> it's always cold. Everybody drives larders, and Chandler wears a, uh, a bearskin sort of Ushanka hat. I'll be there for you, comrade. Yeah. It's just comrades. I don't. I don't. I'll confess. I, yeah, it's just called comrades. It's just comrades. Isn't it? I must confess, I don't know anything about friends, so I can't really continue this one especially well. Comrades, fucking hell! <laughs> I'm just imagining like proper. Like, so I will like. be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> It's just the same theme tune sung by the Rembrandts, but covered by the Red Army Choir. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking hell. (laughs) I'm sorry. 
How so, does this happen? <laughs> apologies to the Soviet Union. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Jesus Christ. But yeah. I, I find that fascinating that people are still writing fics about something from a country that no longer exists. Yeah, it must have really uh, resonated mm. um, with, uh, with somebody. Grace. Yeah, I I never thought I'd find it, but I found a labyrinth thick. Oh, <laughs> oh, it is by lesbians so I, on ice. <laughs> ice skaters wear a lot of tight pants. It was only natural. It, it's it's a natural conclusion. conclusion that David Bowie's labyrinth would be part of this. Oh, Yuri is David Bowie. Uh, I don't see it personally. Um, no. When Yakov orders Victor under house arrest for being late to practice again, Victor decides to spend some time with his beloved poodle and watch the 1986 film Labyrinth starring David Bowie. However, when Victor accidentally summons the very real, very glittery and very sexy oh, shit. Goblin King Yuri, oh. he is always to take on That's the challenge of the Labyrinth himself if he wants to get his beloved dog back. But the tags say Goblin King Katsuki Yuri. Yeah. So David Bowie and Yuri are separate entities. No, David Bowie was the Goblin King, wasn't he? Yeah, but so is... <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> Yuri is the sexy Goblin King. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose that um, he looks like David Bowie on the screen, but he's actually Yuri in real life, because he's been summoned. And now Victor is in a labyrinth and has to get his dog back, by the looks of things. Maybe Do David Bowie like possesses his body. <laughs> I, I don't think... Um, Oh, I, I feel like we've strayed from <laughs> what the author was intending. <laughs> well. <laughs> but I like this tag. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the crack labyrinth A that absolutely no one asked for. Unbeated. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> so, lesbians on ice. I'm constantly asking glitter. for labyrinth crossovers with things. We need more David Bowie as the Goblin King just showing up and kidnapping a character. I I'm, think that's I'm hot shit. I'm fine with the cast change. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, this is... Uh, Lesbians on Ice has been quite prolific with this. It's 17,000 words. Like, mm. 17 yeah, and a half thousand words. That's a lot I of am, David Bowie. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I, I am curious to see how our, our soft boy Yuri does as, like, the <laughs> sexy goblin king. Because <laughs> he's a fluffy lad, and it's just like... Uh, <laughs> He's not a fluffy lad anymore. What's happened? <laughs> oh, he's the bad boy. <laughs> he is the bad boy. While I'm at it, um, the tag alternate universe labyrinth, 186 works. Oh, so oh. yeah, so they exist. So that there is a, a mini genre of labyrinth happening to other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it involving Hannibal, by the looks of it. So yeah, we've got uh, Critical Role, Crikey. Harry Potter, Ace Attorney. Hannibal. Miles Edgeworth suits becoming the Goblin King, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the numbers, there is one relationship that overwhelms all the others. Hmm. Katsuki, Yuri, and Victor is the most popular. Yeah, I could kind of say yeah. By three times compared to the second largest. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's about them anyway. Ex the yeah, that's true. I guess this is the gay spy family. In that everyone wanted them to smooch. Yeah, in the show... It's everything's implied heavily, but you don't really see anything. Um, and yeah, to, to some people, it's it's in a way you've given them privacy, and the other a lot of people argue that it's just like they've they've uh, washed over it for censorship. And yeah, there's a lot of there's a very similar discussion happening right now in the Gundam franchise. Funnily enough, hmm. oh yeah, because um, Mio and I've forgotten her name. Saletta didn't kiss. Their show's over. No kissing. And everyone's devastated. But oh. but they are married, so it's it's still canon. It's just we don't see anything. Hmm. So, I don't know. I've not read it, but I found one called Husbands Building Bondage Ikea Furniture <laughs> Bondage at 3 Ikea. Yes. By Baboff. So, hold on, Nick. You really were enthusiastic about Bondage Ikea there. What do you know? Oh, it's just not... It's not... Right, I've no idea about Ikea selling bondage furniture. I just really like putting up flat packs. <laughs> 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 well, 
What's fantastic. your safe word? I don't know. I can't read it. It's long and Swedish. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. They're uh, looking to add some spice in the bedroom when they stumble upon the fascinating world of BDSM. Unfortunately, they're too broke to build a sexy dungeon and too inexperienced, so they search for them. Oh, they try and build a sex dungeon on the cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 and apparently... It, uh, uh, they're still at it at 3am, so I assume shenanigans, go, uh, things go wrong with this flat pack. <laughs> Have we all seen the meme of that couple using, um, you know, the plastic bits that hold beer cans together? Oh. That you're yeah. meant to chop, using those as, like, handcuffs on a budget? <laughs> oh my god. You've been a naughty turtle. Yeah, you've been a you? naughty sea turtle. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sign on the door saying, Great Pacific Garbage Patch, do not enter. <laughs> I did see a pirate ship, hey you, but I've lost it now. Oh, there we go. Into the Deep by Ars Matron. Or Ars Matron, depending on how you want to pronounce that. <laughs> Matron of the I'm gonna I'm going to go Ars, because uh, there's no E on the end. Yeah, I, ARS Matron. Oh, it's Alpha Beta Omega Pirates. The best kind. Yeah. For five years, the mysterious pirate ship, the Eros, has tormented the Eastern Seas. The most heinous of their crimes, the abduction of Omegas from their very homes. Oh, some Millie children. Fuck off. We're not doing that. <laughs> oh, we've got to be careful. <laughs> we really do. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't ta- that wasn't in the tags. To be yeah, to be fair, it, there's a it's rated explicit, but there's no archive warning, so there might not yep. be. I mean, it's it's a risk, but there might not be, uh, you know, underage smut. Viktor Nikarov, captain of the Russian military's fastest ship, the Agape, has dedicated his life... Agape. Agape has dedicated his life to finding the infamous pirate pack, rescuing the Omegas he can, and avenging those beyond his reach. This... <laughs> it sounds like there might be more to this, you know? Yeah, it sounds like one of those absolutely out there romance novels and that's not a criticism yeah yeah i can see the kind of you know the art style of like burly men wearing the billowy shirts yes like the classic yeah. romance novel style they all sort of look like how only it's pirate and abo so everything's black and red yes <laughs> first time writing fanfic in abo so i ask only that you bear with me here I, they've done a cracking job because it's quite high up on the kudos list yeah. now sit back and let matron tell you a story They've chosen that screen name on purpose. I hope so. Yeah. This looks to have uh, lots of plot. Someone made the joke I made. It's 181,000 words. Sorry, I got distracted because someone made... There is a fic called by Bookie Bookworm. Okay. Called He Was a Skater Boy, He Said See You Later Boy. <laughs> she said see you later, boy, even. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really glad that I'm you've pleased had your validation. I'm pleased I am validated today. <laughs> Oh, hang on, there's, a, there's FF in this relationship. What? Didn't realise there were women in Yuri on Ice? No, surely not. Yeah, there are women. You can't be having that. Women in my you Yuri? Can. It's more likely than more you More likely than you think. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ancient memes again. <laughs> Hello, friends. Um, what is this? This young Yuri is a group chat. Mm-hmm. The no- I-, I like the notes. The notes are just, what the fuck is this? See you all in hell, goodbye. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think group chat... Uh, Vix aren't so bad. No, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a good chat, Vic. Grace, is Eros and Agape a thing in the show? Yes. That explains why I'm seeing it come up so often. Eros and Agape are the names of the choreography um, for uh, both Yuri's dances. So, uh-huh. Yuri Katsuki does the Eros dance, which is like sexual love based, and uh, uh, Russian Yuri does agape which is which means like unconditional and family love oh. and that's the type of love he dances about makes sense hmm, hang on i've just had a yeah. thought i'm genuinely surprised it's taken me to page four to find mpreg what well, yeah well, we were doing so well <laughs> yeah i mean it was lurking about in the alpha beta this oh my god dynamic mm. from page one i think this is the fair. first time i've seen it as like a as a tag of its own uh. Okay, so you might be interested to know. Um, I just had a look. There are no crossover fix 
between Yuri on Ice and the only two famous skaters I know. Okay. Torville and Dean. I don't know who they are. Oh. Yeah, there's there's, there's none, but that's fine. Uh, what there is, however, speaking of ancient memes... Oh, no. Um, I found one called In Post-Soviet Russia, Dog Pets You by Stammy Victor. Okay. And the summary is, oh, it's Lord. a very strange morning at the Katsuki Nikivarov household. And the notes are literally just say, this one's unhinged, don't say I didn't warn you, angry smiley face. I'm in. So I'm invested, post this one. <laughs> yeah, this is, I, I have posted, look three, uh, look three fix up. Oh, in post of Russia, dog pets you. Yeah, this is additional tags, which are YOI, pause on ice, zine, body swap, mentions of past alcohol problems. I think you're, uh, I, th- I think that, hang on a second... I think they saw something fluffy and decided to make it dark. No, I think Vic- oh, what? I think Victor gets put in the body of a dog. Is there a dog in Yuri on Ice? Eh? Yeah, he's got a pet poodle. I think Victor is the poodle. Oh. Possibly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, because one of the tags is uh, Victor gets what he deserves, in brackets, affection. When Yuri notices the kibble on the floor, really notices it, the little morsels of dry food have been painstakingly arranged into... words... Yuri, it's me, Victor, your husband. I don't know what is happening, but I have to pee and I'm scared. <laughs> okay. Victor's I'm a dog. This. Victor's a dog. He's woken up as a dog. Yeah, I'm I'm into this. <laughs> this is your fetish? <laughs> no, I mean I want to see where this goes. Okay. I don't cool. want to be a dog. Okay. You heard it here. <laughs> you heard it here first. Do, definitely do not send Nick a collar to the following address. <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm not going to dox you. Don't worry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but if you do want to send Nick a dog collar, email me. We'll sort something out. Please don't send me a dog collar. Send Nick a dog collar. Don't send me a dog collar. Or a lead or anything. We'll take photos. The, no, we won't. <laughs> Well, Nick, this is this is going to start your OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, for you'll God's make, sake! You'll make bank. I mean, to be fair, I don't think I'll care how I got the money if I was cruising around in a Bentley. So, exactly. That's the sp- that's, that's the, spirit. the spirit. Yeah. So you heard it here first. First, the dog collars. Bye, Nick Dog. Now the uh, next, the feet picks. Yeah. I'm listening to my family judge me. Say hi to them for me. Hi. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not Grace that's starting the OnlyFans, it's Nick. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, I, I was drawn to that by the title, but I got other things. Honestly, that sounds great. Yeah, it does. It does. I cannot stay awake much longer. Yeah, we'll, we'll be wrapping up soon. Mm. We have been going for two hours. Oh god. Yeah, a lot of that was us dicking about, though. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I think weekday recordings, we find it even more difficult to stay on topic. We'll be back to weekends next time. <laughs> yeah, stop worrying. I mean, next time I'm, we'll do it in person. Yeah. At your place. Yeah, we will. And then, then we'll be back to our normal schedule. Yep. Yeah, assuming, your... assuming no one books any surprise holidays. <laughs> I ain't got the money. I've. Yeah, I've not got the money. I mean, I may buy a surprise car, but... That just means that I'll be more skint than usual, so I'll have to stay at home anyway. I did book a week off. It is purely for playing Starfield. Yay! We got space boys. <laughs> Whoop! Count if we. Hot boys wanted by orphan account. <laughs> um, just just one more thing, Mister Shipping James. One more thing. Uh, yep. th- this is Yuri on ass by Yolo High Five. Yuri on ass. <laughs> By YOLO. <laughs> and the summary... Okay. Oh, that's of its time. <laughs> the summary is a cult about praising the ass cheeks of Katsuki Yuri. Fair. <laughs> There's no tags other is than it it's a fucking members? crack fic. Notes, I'm so sorry. The this is a very which, short one. The podium of which she preached at was an exact replica of Yuri bent over, his ass being the holder of the tray to the table. <laughs> this is actually a... Ch- it's not just... Saying, yeah, we worship that ass. This is actually a church of Yuri's ass. Yeah, this is the church of YA. <laughs> oh For God. his ass is the thing of legends. The clap of them is pure music to the ears. Bach would cry if he ever lived to hear such a symphony. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, <laughs> such I mean, you've seen Fergus Gators, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, that seems accurate. <laughs> oh god, this is... Church of Yuri's ass. I wonder what communion's like. What do they hand out? <laughs> I don't know what you're replacing bits of biscuits in a cup of wine for. <laughs> Peaches is what they hand out. Yeah. <laughs> Take this peach, oh for it is his peach. <laughs> the booty of yep. Victor. I mean, Yuri. Uh, actually, peaches and little chocolate starfish. Oh, no. Aww. Like them. Oh, you had... Go, like they no, no, you've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and bits of Velcro. Right, come on, next. Right, so what have we learned today? Oh, I've learned that there's a cult dedicated to worshipping Yuri's ass. Okay, what else have you learned? Funnily enough, little to nothing about figure skating. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping to le- leave learning a little bit more about figure skating. Nah. I... No, you weren't. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Don't lie. Yeah, that's it. I've learned this fandom is mostly wholesome. Yeah. yeah. I'm, so, I fully expected this fandom to completely disregard the underageness of evil y- Russian Yuri. Yeah. He's not evil. But they haven't. They've aged him up in every fic I've seen. He's not evil. I'm. He's the rival character, so he's evil in my mind. He's not evil, he's just misunderstood. He's just misunderstood he's, and Russian. He's going through a phase. And as we all know, Russians are the second best villain accents in the world. Yeah, fair enough. What's the first? British. British. No, we are just villains. What's the first? Exactly. Well, yeah, we <laughs> That's why to, we're so good. We don't have no. to try too hard. That's why every film casts us as villains. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I learned I'm going to watch Yuri on Ice. Okay. Hopefully in time for the next time we sit down and record. Yeah, I might see if I can uh, catch a few episodes. It seems like a a kind of fluffy way to Wholesome unwind. sports thing yeah. where two boys kiss. This is it. But they don't kiss, that's the thing. Oh, they don't kiss. Yeah, you're right. It's it's very... Um... Wholesome thing where it's implied that two boys kiss. Yeah. Yes. And implied that they get married. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is even funnier. <laughs> Let me buy you this ring of friendship. It's like, oh, come on, mate. <laughs> yeah, take this friendship. Take this ring of friendship, because we are just friends, honestly, bro. <laughs> Hang on, let me just look something up. So when did this come out? Oh, it was in the 2010s. That's what I thought. I feel like late 2010s, maybe. Something. Same-sex marriage was not legal in Japan until 2022. Ah. Oh, which was a okay. damn shame, incidentally. Yeah. It would have been a very different show, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wait, sorry. Uh, absence of sense of marriage was not... Okay. This is a long, confusing Wikipedia, but... Uh, yeah, it is... Legal, but after this show came out, I suspect, if I understand that correctly. Yeah. So maybe they were erring on the side of caution that nothing was... When we get the gritty reboot that is due once every ten years, they can make they'll probably kiss. get actual married. Yeah. They can this make time. them kiss and make them have a wedding. Exactly. Yeah. Well, not make them, because of course they want to. Well, no, you, you should never make anyone marry. No. No. Unless you're the Goblin King. <laughs> Sage advice. Yeah. Only David Bowie can force you to get married by kidnapping your daughter. <laughs> Bloody hell. I mean, t- to be fair, I don't believe he's dead. David Bowie or the yeah. Goblin King? <laughs> like, David Bowie. I just believe he okay. went home to his own yeah. planet. Oh my god. <laughs> I can believe that. Mm. And we're also about to go home to our home planets. Unless there's anything else you guys want to add before I hit the stop button on the recording. Yeah, we already oh, are no, on our home I'm, planets. I'm about to sneeze again, Celeste. Grace is about <laughs> to sneeze again. You heard it here first. And if you sub to our Patreon, you can hear her sneezing. Because we're going to cut it out of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't just, uh, you cannot just post audio <laughs> of Grace sneezing. I do what I want. I mean, yeah, I suppose you are the editor, so you can do what you want, but, you know. I'm not going to do that. That's not okay. That's unethical. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll post, it? I'll post, yeah. Yeah, it is. Post nothing without consent. I'll post me sneezing and f- label it as Grace. Okay. So then, if this any perverts so have... <laughs> this is such a weird thing. I know, yeah, I'm going to stop this tangent. <laughs> it's getting weird. Uh, but I don't understand. Like, I, it's just sneezing. There are sneeze fetishists out there, Grace. Yeah. Are you joking? No. This is first I've heard of it. Oh. I mean, it's a big Why? world. There's a there's a fetish for nearly everything. I once discovered a sneeze fetish forum that was a compilation of 
people sneezing and people collecting famous people's sneezes. That, that seems like one of, the, one of the more innocent ones, to be fair. It wasn't as bad as I thought, because, of course, once I saw that URL, I had to dig into it. Just hang on a second. So, collecting famous people's sneezes. Also writing fix about people sneezing. Right. I'll be back in a bit. I have an eBay shop to open. <laughs> <laughs> oh god like I can just it's sell... what he does best James I, I, I can just sell him. a yeah. jar with some snot in it and label it George Clooney gamer girl sneeze Jeff Goldblum <laughs> Belle Delphine <laughs> Angelina Jolie are you seeing where I'm going with this I do they're going to test sample your snot and find out but it's not a, a hot you're gamer not gamer girl, genius but it's... But it's a northern fella. Yeah, it's, it's just me. <laughs> There's a lot of pastry in this. It probably came from Yorkshire. <laughs> There's a Wigan kebab in this, my snot. <laughs> wow, how did he get hold of 600 sneezes from popular streamer Amaranth? <laughs> so what have we actually learned today? I answered that. I thought I gave very good answers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's... <laughs> I um, learned that the couple still reigns supreme. The Yuri and Victor. Yeah. 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 The best boys. I still prefer Russian Yuri, looks wise. I'm sorry, but there it is. <laughs> There'll be fix out there if you want to go. He's the prettier problem. of the two of them. Yuri on Yuri. Mm hmm. Ah, you're wrong. Nah. <laughs> Yuri on Yuri. This on is ice. where we fight. <laughs> like, I, I get the appeal of Japanese Yuri, hmm. but. Uh, no. I think I think if you watched the show, you like, know what? Yeah, <laughs> here are my predictions cause, now. Because like, here's the thing: the year you like, you've only seen a headshot of him. He's he's a scrawny young lad. <laughs> oh no, I've googled him since then. Right. I've googled all of them. I'm putting you on a list. I had a I had the <laughs> wiki up the whole time. He's, he's, He's a young boy. <laughs> I'm putting you on a list. Uh, are you are you on a list? Okay, we'll wrap up in that case. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll leave disappointed in you, James. <laughs> <laughs> You've had equally terrible takes. I'm sure. No. I can't, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I think the worst was liking Prince Sidon, to be honest. Ah, uh, everyone likes Prince Sidon. Yeah. Yeah. He's a handsome fish. He is a fish. <laughs> he sure he's a, is. A fish with, he's a dishy he's a, fish. He's a dishy fish with abs. Exactly. And on that note, it's time for us to end the show. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for listening, if you made it this far. Join us again in two weeks, where we will be bringing three fics that we enjoyed the most. I'm going to make it my mission to watch Yuri and Ice to see if my, my uh, takes have changed on any of the characters since then. Okay. And um, if you like the show, the best way to support us is tell your friends. Yeah, like, and comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Exactly. All you you know the drill yeah. by now. You've watched surely. far too many let's plays. Exactly. Of I don't know. If you found people. us, statistically, you've probably heard someone say like and subscribe. Yes. Which we hope you do. Hmm. And for just one pound a month, you can join us in our Discord, so you can see what we're talking about as we talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it's a quid, and mm -hmm. you get access to the Discord, you get to suggest yeah. uh, topics, fix, you get to talk to us. Exactly. You uh, also get access to episodes as they're ready, mm. instead so, of waiting for me to upload them. So slightly earlier. Exactly. Usually about a week earlier, it depends on what our schedule's looking like, but we should be back to normal now. Yes. And don't forget, you can join us on Fridays for Fanfix and Chill. Uh, by the time this goes up, we'll be still doing our Team Fortress fix. Yep. And uh, moving back to Doctor Who soon. Oh, so, yes. We, we need to so finish that. Stick thing. around for that. Mm. But yeah, thank you for listening. And see you soon. Good night. Good night. Good night.